Nice to see you back. In the second part of this series, we'll look at methods we can use to get a good shot from a single basket. I didn't have a good time trying to find tutorials on this topic, and to be frank, I was a bit discouraged. This wasn't like trying to find a common coffee advice. There isn't much information on the internet, and worse yet, some had conflicting ideas. In order to make this learning easier, I brainstormed the few advices I found and summarized all of them, which results in two popular tutorials, very polarizing in nature, but of which I believe can represent all the available advices I found. The first one is this one from the Home Barista Forum posted 17 years ago. It's actually the method I used in the only time I brewed a single shot in this channel before. The highlight of this method is that it requires you to tamp three times, which is done to ensure a better uniformity in the tapered area. Hence, it requires a nine-step process which might not suit baristas that do not want additional fuss. I'll be linking the article in the video description, so please check it out if you want to learn more details. Okay, now, let's kick off by following the steps. So to begin, let's dose between 8 and 9 grams, and change the grind size to be a tad finer than usual. From here on, it gets really tricky, so I'll go slowly. The instruction says that we should start from the first fill. Instead of dumping all the dose into the single basket, fill it with grounds just enough to fill the tapered chamber. Spread it around using something like the WDT, and then lightly tamp the grounds using a small diameter tamper. This is a 39mm tamper from my flare signature. It's neither commonly used nor frequently sold, and it's quite expensive as well. I guess the best cheap workaround is to use a 3D printed 39mm tamper. The tamp doesn't have to be perfect, just a flat light tamp is okay. After that, the remaining coffee goes on top of that tamped puck. This will form a mound of coffee which will need to be sorted out using your finger or a spoon. Just do your best to juggle the grounds to the middle as much as possible. Now take your small tamper again and tamp straight down the middle. This time, the force should not be light, but regular. Then take your normal tamper and tamp the whole thing. The feedback force might be very different than tamping a double shot basket, so please do it carefully and don't force anything. Since the second tamp still results in a non-uniform tamp, you can rake the surface with WDT and make a more uniform surface. Only until then you can do the third and final tamp. You can add a shower screen to improve the shot as well. And yes, that was quite some hard work, so let's start brewing. So here's the final result. Looks nice and tastes good, and I found this method to be consistent from shot to shot too. I do have some notable complaints though. You can clearly see some obvious channeling in the bottomless portafilter during brewing. This can also be somewhat confirmed by the puck after the brew. Plus, there was a slight mute and muddy flavor that I could taste. This means that this method still has a tendency to cause channeling, something that might stem from the fact that some variables could go wrong in the long process. For the second method, we'll look at the Wired Gourmets method which he posted last year. I'll link his video in the description, so please say hi to him and watch his video for more details. In his video, he recommends an even higher dose, around 11 to 13 grams. Once again, the exact value depends on your very basket. He also showed us how to figure it out using the coin method. After I settled on 11.5 grams, I went ahead and tried brewing with this method. This method is an order of magnitude simpler than the first one. Just dump all the grounds in, use WDT, and tamp like you normally would with a double shot basket. And just proceed the same way you do your doubles. So this one is a bit unique. I feel like it's rounder and bolder, which reminds me of the shots my flare signature makes. The finished puck seems to also be a lot cleaner, which might indicate less channeling. But strangely enough, the bottomless image kind of shows otherwise. I'm not sure what is happening here, but regardless, I'm surprised by how straightforward this method is. 
I do have again some major concerns too. 11 to 13 grams is very close to double shot territory, which I think completely defeats the purpose of single shots. It's something that you'd have to forgo to greatly streamline the process, and personally speaking, I'm not the one who's willing to do that. But then again, I'll leave it up to you. Both methods have their pros and cons, and your priorities should decide which approach you're taking. But what's certain is that I've definitely proved the single shot doubters wrong. This is not a journey that is supposed to be completely ignored. I believe it's worth embarking, and if you don't end up liking your single shots, at least you'll still learn a thing or two from the process. In the next video, which will also be the last part of this series, we will further optimize these two methods to get the best out of both worlds. It's going to mostly converge the positives of both, so I hope to see you once again there. Please vent your thoughts in the comment section below. Until next time, 